Oneness, fellas. This is Shofar from Fo Show Energy Work. And this is six to nine womb beings that you should either adore or avoid. On this video, we're going to go over six different womb beings that you should either avoid or adore. And then on my Patreon channel, I'll put the other three so that it gives you six to nine. And so before we get into that, though, let's talk about some traits that causes these womb beings to be either someone you should avoid or someone you should adore. The first thing is the counterfeit personality. I talk about this on the other channel, on my other video with the womb beings, uh, letting them know about what type of men they should avoid. But the counterfeit personality, this is a term that I first heard from Master Yao, a.k.a. Yao Morris. And it basically talks about how we come into this planet with a natal blueprint or a type of person, a, a personality that is dormant that's going to actually help us have success in life. But for many of us, because of either nurture or nature, trauma, ancestral shit, that gets distorted. It gets thrown off course. It gets corrupted in some way. And so now we have what we call a counterfeit personality. And that counterfeit personality, depending on how warped it is, we may not even be able to have, uh, you know, good, productive relationships. So... That's one thing. And then the second thing is where they're at as far as they're on the scale of pride and doubt, pride and doubt. So if they're very uh, prideful, you know, very strong energy of, you know, say very strong headed masculine energy, that may be of a challenge. It's nothing wrong with a womb being having masculine energy, but when it's warped, and distort it in a certain way, that can be a challenge. And then on the other end, if they're in the, uh, the feminine energy of doubt and not understanding the strength of the feminine energy, it may put them in a doubt, doubtful place, doubting themselves or doubting you, whatever. And either one of those two extremes or any different variation of those, you really want someone who stands in their own self-confidence and their own self-confidence. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the countdown. Mama. Maybe you could stop brushing my hair so I can read. Read? You never get to read. What you reading for? Because I enjoys it, Mama. Don't look like to me you enjoys it. Just sitting there all grouchy. Mama, I got to read this book and six other books tonight or else I can't play foot. Ball. Foosball. You playing the foosball behind my back? The only reason I'm doing it is so, so I can go to school. School? You going to school? Ow! Oh, I'm sorry, Mama. I wanted to tell you. You all gallivant with your fancy foosball friends at school while I'm sitting here all day with nobody to keep me company? Number one is the needy mother. Some would call this the, the I think, the oral personality type but this is the needy mother like there's a beautiful nurturing energy to this womb being but it's from a place of neediness and so there's a need for attention or there's a need to have a connection you know that that goes beyond just a regular attachment that the feminine actually looks for and needs which is healthy but it, when it's distorted it can become kind of parasitic in pulling after in a way because it's based on scarcity it's based on not being able to even sit with themselves and needing someone else to feel whole can't be alone they need someone else in their life constantly and especially once you have intimacy with them they can be pulling after your energy in a, in a unhealthy way so avoid that you know what i'm saying you can send love to them you don't have to you know with any of these even if it's an avoid energy you don't have to cut them off completely if it's someone you love or whatever. I mean, this could be someone in your family that you have blood to even. But the thing is, you got to create that healthy distance with it and be able to have the healthy dance with it, right? So uh, number one is that needy mother. Number two is the boss bitch. You know, and I don't like to use the word B. I don't use the word nigger. I don't, when I'm talking about, you know, homosexual or bisexual people, I don't use the F word, you know, but 
I know wound being sometimes they can call each other that. I think, you know, if you're from that culture and that's your thing, you can get away with it. For me, I just stay away from them because you never know where people are in their healing journey or how it's going to land across the board. So it's just certain words that for me is like, even though they're just words, they carry a certain charge depending on what ear is hearing it, right? So with that being said, though, it's the boss bitch or the independent womb being, but when it's coming from a place of pride, when it's coming up from a place of uh, being prideful and full of that pride and distorted, uh, in many cases, masculine energy that needs to be the head of things and needs to set the tone for the relating, for the relating and, and wants all other energies to fall back or to fall into a place of subservience or to feel in a negative way that you don't need nobody else, that you're independent, that you're an individual. Not understanding that the word individual has dual in it for a reason, you know, because we all, there's no such thing as islands, even an island underneath that water is still connected to the mainland. You feel? So uh, this is another one to avoid, in my opinion. Do what you want. You sit on your own king throne and you, as a sovereign being, you can make your own call on that. Uh, maybe, you know, she give good head. You know what I'm saying? If that's your thing. One, the head to headaches ratio outweighs shit for you. Myself, I would say this is one to avoid. Because it's not honoring of your own masculine energy. Uh, just causing like two fucking rams, two Aries rams. You, you, you bumping heads and shit. Why go through that? I, w I would say to me as an avoid because it's like do your own inner work during this time. And at best, you know, you give them the Heisman. See, so you can get the whole, the whole Heisman joint. You give them the whole full face mask joint and, and keep them up off of you. That's me, you know, so you, again, as a sovereign being, you make that call. But the second one is that independent boss. I remember the first time I saw Dashiki. She was fine enough to be Jet Beauty of the Week. Yo, 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 Lo, Lo, come here. I'm What's up, nigga? Yo, man, who just fucking over here? Oh, nigga, that's Dashiki. Stay away from them. Everybody in the hood's been up in her. Shoot. She got more kids than Miss Wayne. Damn. Yeah. Number three is the thought. That hoe over there. Again, hoe is another one. I don't like that word particularly myself. I don't use it. But this is a term that is in popular culture. So you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the way I see a thought is, and this one can fall either pride or doubt. And then also that interplay about where they're at with their counterfeit personality. Uh, but the thought to me is a, a, an awakened sensual being. You know, and she might get passed from from man to man or woman to woman, whatever she's into, both. She may get a train ran on her. You know what I'm saying? She getting that full Amtrak uh, locomotive type of thing, action going on. And a lot of guys have the ticket. You know what I'm saying? They get they all aboard on that ass. Here's the thing, though. It's not necessarily a bad thing. So with her... It's kind of a door or a void thing. Again, it's a it's your own call because in one if you, if you're not falling into a Captain Saberho or energy yourself, if you can understand and see this being, she could be a beautiful one to just have around to have as a as a, a a friend, a friend with benefits if they could be true true understanding. I think also depending on your own growth and where you're at in your own journey, there comes a point where you probably wouldn't want to. Be, deal with a thought per se because again i think as i'm feeling into it i'm speaking through it she also because she doubts herself she hasn't really stepped into the full the, the empowered expression of her feminine or sensual energy and ability to both receive and both receive and give pleasure so as i'm speaking on it and i'm not going to edit that i'm gonna let you see even that thought process that there because the empowered version of the thought is what uh, Master Yao, aka Yao Morris says, is the elegant rose. It's the elegant rose. This is the empowered 
version of the thought. So the the thought is one who, from a place of doubt, doesn't really know her full worth, doesn't understand the power of her pussy, doesn't understand the power of her sensual sexual healing. This is a tantrika. This is a devika. This is a this is a, a, a woman being who is prime to help a man step into his kunyatsa. You know, as Habib Akandi, you can go check out that uh, that video that I talk that we talk about kunyatsa. This is someone who helps a man a man remember his tantricness potentially, but when she doesn't have self worth, when she has daddy issues, when she has counterfeit personality and and other things that doesn't let her know her own value, she's gonna maybe show up in a thoughtish way, and that of itself is going to maybe leave much to be desired as far as, as someone that you should regularly give time to. So number four, sorry, number three is the thought. Number four is the woke goddess. This is a very interesting one because this is dealing with the energy of pride. Not so much doubt, but pride. And this is someone who's read a couple of books, maybe had some experiences, you know, bodily experiences or whatever, and their consciousness has awakened in some way, and that's all beautiful. But what makes it maybe an avoid, definitely for me, you can fill into it yourself, is because you this, the glass is full with this woman. With this womb being, you can't tell her shit, because she already know all of it. So she, in the in it, the, the the positive version of this is what uh, Yao Morris talks about is the seated hawk, is that 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 womb being that in her divine expression is like the feminine Ra and she has power to her. But the woke goddess is a mask of that, is a mask of that. This is not someone who really understands uh, certain things, but they think they do and they know how to put on a mask that they do. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, just ego going on with the the average uh, woke goddess and this whole energy of wokeism, right? Like, uh, even the the term woke is kind of like when you know our Christian sisters and, and brothers, like I'm saved. The fuck does that mean? It's like that's like a bird saying, "I fly." I don't give a fuck if you fly. You got to keep flying and Pride comes before a fall, right? You know, that's what the Bible says somewhere in there. So the woke goddess is on that woke shit. But the thing is, it's like it's about awakening. And as the universe expands and expands and expands, it's in a place of expanding. It's not like the universe said, I, I expand and then it is done. Or to have knowledge is like a Polaroid picture, but a state of knowing. So the woke goddess for me, that's one to avoid. Number five is the Ice Queen. And I, that's the opposite of what Raekwon was talking about on the purple tape. You know what I'm saying? That French vanilla butter pecan, chocolate deluxe. Even Caramel Sundays is getting touched and scooped in the ice cream truck that tears it up. That's not, that's the, that's the opposite. That This is the Ice Queen. You know what I'm saying? She's going to shut down your ice cream celebration. You know what I'm saying? Do not, I would say, avoid the Ice Queen because you know what? With all love and sincerity, the ice queen has probably been hurt. Love is a lie. It is a trick played by the cruel on the foolish and the weak. Cast it from your mind. Never let it render you frail of mind or of will. Because in my kingdom there is but one law. Do not love. And she, there's a positive aspect to the ice queen. Like it can serve the ice queen to have this personality trait to, to, for her to give you the, to give the masculine, to give the man that, that Heisman, right? That, that serves a purpose for her to have a chip of ice on that shoulder. 
But when it's overdone, when it's overstated, when it's when she stays too long in that iceness and it causes a tundra in her fucking heart, it can make it intolerable for you. And unless you into fucking taking, uh, you know, northern hemisphere, you know, North Pole expeditions with a goddamn thing of huskies and and eating out a fucking frozen can or some shit, it ain't worth it. You know, eating fat, you know, seal fat and shit. Like, fuck all of that. The Ice Queen is one to avoid. And is one to send love to. You can send some raw energy to her from a distance, you know, and help warm her heart. But as far as staying in a uh, regular relating and everything, I would say she's one to avoid. The force is strong with the Ice Queen many times. And she also, she has some trauma. She has some things that have frozen that counterfeit personality to a place where the self-reflection in the ice sometimes is being avoided. Now, if she's willing to warm up and to make and to turn that ice queen into a positive thing and use it as a way to deflect men who she don't need to be with, that's a positive ice queen uh, personality that, that wound being should have having their bag of tricks. But I'm talking about once it's going over into that other place on the scale of frigidness and that shit is sub-zero. Mortal Kombat finishing moves on your ass. Erased from history. When she's put into those type of codes, I would say she's one to avoid. And number six is the moon archetype. Yao Morris and me, we have a beautiful, powerful, uh, you know, podcast or interview on this one. Check out my YouTube channel. I'll put the link down below if I remember. Uh, and the moon archetype is the motherly, the motherly energy in a positive way. So remember earlier, we talked about the needy mother. That is a variation of the moon archetype or the moon personality type and or the moon persona. You want that. So you see, like just like the moon, you have different phases, the full moon, new moon, the half moon, crescent, all of that. This is a beautiful, powerful uh, energy to have in your life in all different phases. Some of, you, some of us, we need a new moon energy. Some of us, we need a full moon energy. So in other words, we need more or less of that motherly energy in our life based on where we are as men and our sovereignty and everything. And when she's self-confident, self-confidence in her moon energy and her motherly energy, this could be a powerful one to have in your life. It's one of the sexiest when women want to nurture you and show up in a way where they're trying to, you know, bring gifts and 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 food and and all sorts of things to your kingdom from the abundance of her queendom. That's a beautiful, powerful energy. It's just when it goes into the other energy that it becomes that needy mother. So making that distinction, but this is one that I would say, with all means, by all means, adore. Adore her. So this is six of those different type of womb beings that you should either avoid or uh, adore. The other three will be on my Patreon channel. So if you haven't already, I would say check that out and maybe think about supporting this channel. And again, I am so far from full show energy work. My lady and me, we do energy work, sensual energy work with that SEX, sensual emotional exchange for both couples and singles. I have a book, Soul, Sacred Orgasmic Living. You can get that on the link below. And we also do workshops and webinars. We have a series called Sex to SEX, Central Emotional Exchange. Uh, the link is down below. You can check and see when we have another one. We do both co-ed and then ones just for men about different topics and everything. So you can check the links below. If Again, I thank you for taking the time just to come through. You know that it means a lot to me. And keep that SEX in your life. Keep shining, keep evolving, and do so exponentially. Oneness.